there's no no sound or no volume so i think it should be good so inshallah so i'm going to introduce uh the panel and uh over to my right we got uh, Hafiz Yahya, uh, who's joining us back from a, a, a vacation. So, salam alaikum. Salam alaikum, Hafiz. Hope all is well. Alhamdulillah, it's good. How are you? Alhamdulillah. It's good to be back. Yeah, you've been hibernating. I've been behind the scenes. <laughs> yeah, mashallah. Good to have you. And over in front, Janab Motram Amir Kadi Saab. Salam alaikum wa rahmatullah. Wa alaikum wa salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Salam alaikum, Hafiz Yahya. Wa alaikum wa salam. Was there sound? When you were doing the introduction, how much sound was there? There was no sound? No, just, just when he introduced us. That's okay, so let's do a recap quickly for the brothers. All right, so <laughs> we'll go back again. So uh, thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, YouTube, uh, please go out and like and subscribe. Hit the bell icon um, and follow us on Instagram at MikeDup416. Uh, Amal Artistry, uh, our sister Amal, who is sponsoring our event, uh, is sponsoring the entire month of February um, for all your painting, murals, uh, and artwork needs uh, reach out to sister Amal and uh, where she can be uh, contacted so Instagram at Amal Artistry uh, Twitter the same thing at Amal Artistry email info dot Amal Artistry uh, at gmail.com and the website www.amalartistry.com so um, we want to thank uh, sister Amal uh, for obviously the uh, the sponsorship and you can find our info information uh, underneath the description as well um, so like we are live at our own idara makkah islamic center um, every saturday 7 p.m uh, and then we're open to uh, a, a different type uh, i mean i guess feedback in the sense so if you have uh, feedback you want to give us or you want it so for so for something for us to speak about uh, please do reach out and uh, you can uh, message us uh, in the live chat or you can message us on Instagram and we will have those discussions inshallah hopefully the sound was okay if uh, perfect everyone is good um, all right so cream so I mean for the for the youngsters we're actually I think we're going to show our age here for a second but uh, cream so what does the abbreviation cream mean so c-r-e-a-m and the way we grew up, it was a struggle for money. So cream, the abbreviation means cash rules everything around me. So let's start there for a second. So let's go with uh, Hafiz Yahya. What I'm going to say pretty much is cash rules everything around me. So cash, how do you take that? And what, does, what do you get out of cash rules everything around me? Let's start there. Uh, I think if you were to put uh, the world in one in one sentence or in one phrase, that's what you would say, right? Because everything revolves around money, yeah. right? Whether you um, have to put a roof over your house, whether you have to feed your family, whatever it is, you have to run a masjid, you need money. Yeah. Everything in this world needs money, sadly, right? And then yeah. they say that, you know, the root cause of all evil is money yeah. because people, especially when you put a human being in a time of desperation, they will do anything mm. for that right and uh we sad to say that we have now taken money as instead of you know this is enough for me to live it's become a greed right it's no longer become a necessity it's become a want right and when it becomes a want then you know other uh, it, you you tend to have these uh influences and you you tend to have the wrong way of looking at it right and you don't care how that money is coming in we'll touch upon more about that later but just in you know to kick things off right i would say if you were to summarize the world it's cash rules everything around me yeah mm. and that's that's kind of um that's kind of uh, what we what we mean by this right it's what are people going to do when they're in the struggle Right. So let's talk about the people in the struggle, the less fortunate, um, the ones that, you know, are. Are. I guess they're going to in desperation, they're going to do whatever they they want uh, for money. So let's talk about Islamically for a second and say why the urge and why the need and desperation for money all the time? Because that's what we see, right? Cash rules everything around us. But see, the, the problem is in our in the world that we live in, unfortunately, there's a different class. And the class system has divided the, uh, the society a lot. So you have two extremes, the extreme rich and the extreme poor. Yeah. So, uh, you know, like what it does is it 
degrades the poor and you have the rich and what happens is on media it shows uh for the rich to be rich and systematically for the government to keep the poor at the poor so now the poor unfortunately when we say poor it's just something someone that class of people they would want to be something yeah that they want to achieve that they don't have what the rich has and it's the money so already the government has divided the class of people if we were in one class with one status there wouldn't be a struggle for money everyone would be uh equal you know what i'm saying brother yeah you know and uh i guess what it comes down to is media portrays something and it, and it portrays for us to, you know, like the people living in uh, lower income, for example, they come here from, uh, you know, uh, a background and and then they, they can't live that luxury life or they come from a luxury life. They come here and, you know, they live in, in the boroughs. So for us, it would be like, you know, in Scarborough, um, you know, in Etobicoke, et cetera, and all of these things. So they start living in those areas and they start, the luxury starts to happen. Yo, I need the money. I need this. I need that. Then our youth see this, right? So I want to go there. So our youth now see that, yo, it's a struggle. So what, how am I going to do? What am I going to go into? What are the influences that I'm going to get into society? And that's when they put their foot in to now drugs, selling dope, selling, doing all these things and getting into potentially trouble right so let's talk about that Hafiz Yahya you know we're we're not a, in a state where our Muslim youth now are they're the ones that are shooting music videos in Scarborough they're you know they're trying to live this luxury life they're trying to do whatever it can is it right is it wrong should they be doing all these things what are we going to say about that so there's a handful of things I could say to that number one is that Recently, we saw there was a music video being that was shot in, in around the area of the of this premise, at least. And uh, you see, here's the thing: it, it's all a show, right? Um, you have a rented Lamborghini. You're not even gonna expose your face. You're wearing ski masks because you know if your parents find out, you know, you someone's gonna get hurt, yeah. right? <laughs> and then you know, you also have you know the fact that you're throwing up you know hand symbols to say you know you're affiliated with a gang or whatever. My guy, you're 18, 19. You're no gangster. Yeah. Right. Put it out there. Yeah. Right. You're an entertainer at most. Right. Yeah. You're doing this for the views. Right. You're doing this. OK, because you want to make money off of it. Yeah. Right. But you're going about it the wrong way. Right. Right. You spent whatever, two thousand, three thousand on that Lamborghini. You could have used that to pay your parents bills in the house. Yeah. Right. You are putting more money into this. Right. Thinking and hoping, OK, you know, I'm going to become the next Drake or whatever it is. Right. But in reality, it's not. And long story short it's this this path that you're choosing to to go down right to make money off of think about it in 20 years what kind of stability does it give you right, right. how much money is it going to give you in your household does it have benefits for you is it going to take care of your family no it's not because you every single time you have to release a new song whatever it is right <laughs> you have to keep doing you have to keep keep rinsing and repeating yeah, right yeah, yeah. if one song does well it's not doesn't mean the next two year songs i'm not encouraging you to make songs but i'm telling you what that life is like yeah because i've yeah. seen it right yeah so you're think about it logically that in 20 years am i still going to be rapping or whatever you call it whatever you know this kind of stuff right, right? number two is that you're not going to get rich quick overnight yeah. there's no scheme there's no nothing like that that's ever going to work like that yeah right if you're smart you you'll take your talent what you're good at and you apply that into a field or an industry where you're going to get something out of it. Right. Right. There's no problem. You being from Scarborough being, you know, shown across the world, but give that reflection a good image. Right. Give, yeah. give that give that image of Scarborough that, listen, he made it out of the hood. If you want to call it the hood, he made it out of the hood. He's you know, he's something I, I would look up to take. I don't Elon Musk, whatever it is. Yeah, yeah. Right. They're not rappers. They're not any of this. They've got stuff going for them. Right. That's what you want to showcase yourself as. Right, right. Not right. being not being, you know, a, a monkey. Sorry, excuse my language, but being a monkey <laughs> dancing around in a car you don't even own. Right. <laughs> the bars. I mean, the, the, the lyrics that you guys write, they're garbage. Yeah. Don't even tell a story. 
right? I'm, I'm critiquing that whole concept, right? Yeah. And it's, it's not worth it at the end of the day. I don't know who likes that kind of genre or whatever. If kids like that, that's up to them. But my point being is be smart with the way you're going to go about getting your money right if you really want to rap if you really want there's there's a halal way of doing it without the beats without the they talking about all the obscenities yeah right yeah. if you really want to do it do it that way right right otherwise look there's nothing wrong with working a nine to five job no. there's nothing wrong no. with working for a company working as a normal human being yeah right but again you need to be smart about how you're going to go about making your money that's that's you know just mm. to say the least for now right? okay so I guess we co we come down to uh, the fact that halal earnings. So a lot of people now uh, talk about halal earnings, and they're using this message. So so I get the rapping part. Um, like not everybody is going to be famous like that. You got to sell your soul to the devil. They don't understand that. People are laughing at you. You don't you don't look appealing. But that's the rap side. The other thing is is selling dope. So they're resulting to selling dope. Halal earning versus haram earning. Let's talk about that. Where is this road going to lead the people? Look, <clears throat> it's not going to go anywhere because the halal, it's not, it's not halal what you're doing in the first place. It's going to be, it's haram anyways, entertaining and being in that industry. So let's just rewind a little bit that what is making you uh, coming from your mother's and father's houses, right? You're living in your mom and father's homes, which good is good. It, the Scarborough is not bad, bad. Mm. Or in Toronto, like this is not the hood. <laughs> like there is government housing where people are there for people who are suffering with mental health, disabilities, and et cetera. Or, you know, unfortunately, most of the people who are on welfare who are in those type of establishments. And I can understand someone coming from that difficulty and then, you know, speaking about his life. But you, brother, coming from your mama and papa's house <laughs> and then come from a four-bedroom ha house and going outside and you're acting hood. Yeah. What, what hood have you? Tell me about your life, brother. Tell me what's the struggle that you have been through. Yeah. I want to know that. Yeah. You're watching Bollywood films. <laughs> Your parents were watching Indian dramas, <laughs> Pakistani dramas. Yeah. What gangsterness did you get from that? Yeah. Tell me, like, what hood did you get from that from your household? You come from good. Ha you came from a good household. Yeah. You know, brother, you just wanted to be someone that you're not. Mm. You wanted to become a rapper. So this is not. This is a multiplicity issue. The person doesn't know who he is. There's an identity crisis here, brother. <laughs> you want to become someone that you're not. Yeah. You want to pack guns. But my brother, like, you know what? If a gun was in front of you, you were the first one to urinate. Yeah. <laughs> because, look, you have someone else pulling a gun in front of you and talking all that nonsense. Right now... Look, if brothers want to know what I've seen and what I've been through and what I have, I'll speak and Yo, I'll tell let's you. Hear it. Let's because hear it. look, there's <laughs> I be I ra I was raised in, in an environment where I have seen a lot of stuff, brothers. You know what I mean? Alhamdulillah, never crossed the line, but I was affiliated with a lot of brothers who were not on the correct path. Yeah. I seen guns like on the street when I was in grade, the first gun I've seen was in grade five. Okay. Second one I've seen grade eight, grade nine. People are packing guns and I've seen four fours, eights, nines with them. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen incidents where, where in front of my eyes, this is normal. Yeah. yeah right. Yeah, this yeah. is normal. You have to understand that borderline of Scarborough and where we were from north of was <laughs> it was pretty bad like in that time the 90s era was like it was bad yeah but i'm not a gangster though i've seen this yeah i've seen i was a and when i said affiliated this was what was around me yeah what saved us was one islam and secondly of oh, course 
uh, sports. Yeah. Because our mind was off this stuff, you know, because after three, three o'clock, you're going to go to basketball practice and all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what we've seen, we've seen extortion. Of course. I seen, I seen people, I seen people, I seen people put cops on the floor, brother. Yeah. I seen brothers take guns from the cops. Yeah. The rifles that were stolen from the cops themselves cops were like we don't know what to do the era of the 90s were real bad brother yeah now but now see you- this is this is the issue i don't mean to cut you no, off no, and no. stuff but this is the issue so and <laughs> we're not gonna really <laughs> no no we no, could look, look, we could, we good could. times it was good Listen, times. there's a lot of people out there that think yo this is the era and you know alhamdulillah like my brother said I, like I seen this as well, and I seen it, I seen it in that because my brother is elder, so we used to see it, and and I'm not afraid to say it. Like these guys are talking about nickel and diming, right? We seen people that were pushing weight. Like when I say weight, it was like kilos and all of these things, right? So these guys think like this now, right? It is it's okay to do it. But they haven't even seen anything yet. Now, when it comes down to extortion, bullying, all of these things, you know, these guys, like, let's, let's just talk about the way people dress. Like, you're wearing your sister's pants below your bum. And that's not cool because that's what media portrays it to be. So when these people think, like, yo, I'm coming from the hood, is it really like hood? Like, Scarborough, you grew up in Scarborough, yeah, yeah. Describe the life in Scarborough. Like, are you seeing drive-by shootings? Are look, you, look, no, no, no. Like some I mean? parts of Scarborough, like, look, it's not about Scarborough and, like, you know, with the parts where we come from. Let's just speak generally, right, in Toronto in itself, right? There are parts that are very bad. Like, where we were from, we were, it wasn't bad, bad either. No, no. But the environment was yeah. so hot, right? So, look, the problem now in this era is just that they wanted to become what it is in the 90s. Mm. And they're trying to bring the atmosphere back. But, those people are not the same anymore. Yeah. The, the culture is not the same anymore. Like, look, I'm not saying I don't listen to music. I, I don't. Yeah. But back in the day, listen, I wasn't the greatest person. But there's some music what you would listen to that it would actually show the struggle that you were going through. Right. Like yeah. this abbreviation that we came from cream cash rules. You can see the struggles in this brothers in the in, the, in that in the Wu Tang. Yeah. And they were speaking about those brothers will tell you exactly what they went through. If you look at that, just that clip and that song, it just shows the struggle for these African Americans struggling in, in white America. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's something to be learned about too. Okay. The culture is a little diff- different. The language is bad. Okay. We're not saying to go listen to the music. No, no, I'm not saying that, but I'm saying though, that is the culture that we came from and we listened to. Um, we need, Right now, the brothers to understand that, listen, I'm not a gangster. None of us were gangsters. Alhamdulillah, we have, we have never dealt with anything like that. But you know what? There's a limit. Listen, you listen to music, you listen to all that. That's good. That's your business. But that doesn't mean now you are a rapper. You're, you're going to go, that brother rented out a Lamborghini or whatever he's doing. My brother, you can't even afford a Honda Civic. <laughs> All right, you can't even afford a, you can't even do that because anything can be rented, brother. You can rent something right now. I can rent something right now. Of course, anyone can rent. I can rent a stretch limousine on my wedding. It's just a show. Yeah. It's that for that particular day, particular event. Does that mean that's really you? So let's 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 talk about that in in a short thing. So Hafiz, uh, why do people find the need? To have to be someone that they're not, or they think that they're they're a gangster all of a sudden. So I need to wear a ski mask and, and such. So there, there's a few factors that go into this, and one is that everyone wants to be recognized, right? Yeah. They want to you know walk down the street and feel like you know they're someone, yeah, right. If you live in whatever city or the suburban areas, you know you you think you know I'm I'm the G of the hood, right? Or if you know if you're in a city, right? I'm some accomplished businessman. But right now, well, here what we're seeing is okay. You know what? Like, you want to be you want to be educated. You want to be well, uh, you know, polished. That's that's for nerds. You know, that's that's not our thing, 
right yeah. we'll just be you know we'll represent the hood we'll you know we'll be hip-hop artists whatever it is right or we'll be drug dealers right because i don't need to have an education for that right yeah. i don't need to struggle for that yeah. right i can i can buy and sell it right it's good money easy money no questions asked right and then it's it's because that you know you don't get if there's a hurdle or a struggle in front of someone they're going to take the easier route mm. it's 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 always like that mm. right everyone always wants the easier route but they don't realize that when there's a test and a hurdle the fruit or whatever is going to be there afterwards sweeter. is going to be sweeter wow. right good point. that's what allah says that yeah. after every hardship comes ease Mashallah. right the, that you need to have that hurdle right it also trains you Right, yeah. it develops you as a person. If you don't go through those things, those hurdles, right, and you just have the easy path in life, right, what's the point of living life? No, why did Allah subhanahu wa taala send you here? Right? Hundred percent. If there's no test, hundred percent. Right? Why? Why do you? It, I mean, everyone could be born a king, but they aren't. No, hundred percent. Right? That's some, a very good. Point. Some people have to start from the bottom yeah. and make it all the way there. I'm not quoting Trey. Yeah, players, I was but, just about to say. <laughs> I said some people, you know, you have to start from ground zero and build your way up. Yeah. Yeah. Right. No, no one became a billionaire overnight. No one became a millionaire overnight. No one became successful overnight. No. Right. 100%. They all struggled. Hundred percent. Right. I think that's a very good point. And you know what? And I want to turn it towards these people like that resort to selling dope and selling drugs and doing all these things and whatever. I don't even know what people are smoking nowadays. You know. So all all of that. Like, what is the purpose of doing that? So when I look at it, I look at. If I see a brother or whatever, one day a brother came into the into the masjid and he was high, he smelled like marijuana, this and that. We had a good conversation with him, etc. But, you know, that's your business. I get it. You have to answer for your actions. I can only advise you, etc. But now people are making this like, like what Hafiz Ab said. You know, it's a, it's a, um, yo, I don't want to do the struggle, so I'm going to sling dope. So you're going to do all those things. Name me one gangster that is still alive or didn't get caught or got killed by the cops. So why are people resorting to selling dope? And what is the the aspect of that? Like, what's the punishment of that? Let's talk about that in a second. Why are you resorting to selling dope? You're not making millions, because if you're making millions, you'll buy that Lambo, but you're not. You're renting it for 400 bucks a night. No, I think he already answered that question, right? Because you're trying to impersonate someone already. You're trying to act like someone that you're not, right? We're watching too much uh, movies, first of all. Right, we need to get out of the cinemas. We need to get out of the living room. We need to face reality. Some, all these people, are all pampered, right? They're spoiled brats. All right, um, anyone can buy a gun, brother. Anyone can go buy a kilo or whatever weed or whatever it costs. Now you can buy, you can open a marijuana store now, <laughs> right? And, right. And, <laughs> and, right sell, and sell dope, right? If you want to become a dealer now, like <laughs> a marijuana wholesaler now. I mean, is it, are you categorized the same thing as being a retailer? Yeah. So those brothers who are retailers who are selling dope, <laughs> are they better than you now? Mm. You're selling dimes. They're, sell, they're selling more. Yeah. Right? So, like, what are you trying to say, brother? Like, get out, get out of this whole scheme, right? Yeah. And you know what? Get out of this whole scheme. Stop watching all this entertainment. Stop watching, stop listening to music. Stop doing all that. Um, that's what the root cause is, brother. And then after that, as you know, uh, with impersonating someone, brother, so you're a guy, you need a beautiful girl, right? Yeah. With the beautiful girl, you need a beautiful ride, right? Valentine's Day is coming up, right? You know, it, it leads <laughs> to one thing to another, right? One sin will lead to a greater sin, right? And why, what the purpose of this is, is that, Everything is temporary. That car was temporary that you're going to buy with haram. The drugs that you're selling, haram. What the outcome of that is unlawful zina. Well, zina is unlawful anyways. I mean, unlawful sex, right? You cross the line now. Now what you're in, you're in a circle with, with shaitin and haram with you. Bad people. Um, the black shadow that we say that's around you and it's going to be around you as long as you are until you get out of that curse brother you know what I'm saying yeah, yeah. so you see all this some people try to have too much ego 
and they try to uh, be who they're not. Right. So, and then, you know, another another thing comes up where now you grow up with rich parents or so-called rich parents and stuff like that, and and then the, those kids are pampered, right? So then they start getting used to the luxury, right? Oh, daddy, buy me this. Daddy, buy me that. Daddy, do this. You know what I mean? And then, you know, daddy's buying them a Beamer. Daddy's buying them all of these things. And, you know, and, and then that leads to them having that urge. So we talked on one side, right? The people in the struggle or they think they're in the struggle or whatever, and then portraying what they're not. But now let's talk about those parents who just, daddy, I want $100. And boom, you get $100. You know what I mean? And they just, there's no justification for all of that. You get what I'm saying? How about those parents who are constantly just pampering their kids and just feeding them money? So what happens at the end? Yo, they start thinking they're up here. And then the greed for money, the greed for money starts to, starts to happen. So let's touch on, touch on that. So I remember you told me a story when I was very young that Hadisa Abrahamdullah, when kids used to cry, you would say, don't, don't stop them from crying. Don't yep. pamper them. Don't pick them up. Yep. Right? Because from a early on, from a very young age, they develop that, that, you know, if they just make a little noise, they bang their feet, they cry, whatever it is, you're going to tend to them, right? And then you're going to start showing them attention, 100%. right? Nowadays, what's happened is that those parents were just throwing the money, right? They know they can't give or they can't have any other fruitful relationship with their child, right? So they'll at least satisfy whatever that need is. Yeah. Right. Because they don't have that one on one relationship. They don't have that, you know, heart to heart with them. Right. So they know and the child, you know, they know their child is not going to spend time with them, whatever the case is. So they say, OK, you know, my child needs a hundred dollars or my child needs a car, whatever. I'll provide it. At least my child will look good up to me or my 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 father and my mother. You know, they, they, they treated me right. Right. But it never ends up happening because what happens? The kid hits, you know, his 20s, goes to university, graduates, gets on with his life, forgets about his parents. So you can buy them all of that stuff, all the fancy riches of the world. But they're never that, they, you know, they, they don't they don't they don't think of it like that. They just look at you as the as the bank and unlimited, you know, Fort Knox or whatever you want to call it, unlimited bank account that every time I need something, they're going to be there to give it to yeah, because me. Because daddy's going to bail me out. Exactly. Right. Yeah. And there's no. There's no sense of independence afterwards. When you when they have to be on their own two feet, that's when they cry. Yeah. So what do what do we say about that? Just in the sense of just getting pampered all the time, and then but you know, those they are grow. the ones. Those are the ones you gotta fear, right? Yeah. Um, with truthfully, when the ones who get pampered because they have not been disciplined enough, right? And those are the ones that have no limits, right? So they're used to doing things uh, because they have power. Right, because yeah. they have everything what the you know the dad wants, and we've seen these people as well. Um, those are the ones that have egoistic issues. Those are the ones that grow up who have no friends, and they want friends. They are the ones who buy friends, right? And those are the ones who try to become someone. Those are the ones you see in your circle that just want to be you, right? <laughs> they were trying to be like you, and they're trying to do so much to impress you. Yeah. In that circle, right? right? Because they just wanted to be in the in group, but yeah. how they get in is with through money, mm. right? So they become your friends. And like for us, like we had, we, we knew people like that too, right? In our circle, but like, oh, bro, go get me, give me something to eat, man, for lunch, <laughs> right? Or you know what I mean? Go get me something like that because you've seen those people. Those were people with money. My mom and dad never gave me lunch money. Yeah, we didn't have. Okay, I didn't even get lunch. I didn't <laughs> like forget that. But then you see these people try to try to be with you. And even like you see them, you smell them, right? They have money, right? But they're the one. It's not like they don't have. I'm not trying to discourage those parents that love their children. Okay, there's nothing like I love my son. I want him to have lunch money <laughs> when he goes to school and all that. But I don't want him to get extorted as well, right? <laughs> so I want him to feel yeah. one that by eating lunch outside, right? it's it's a privilege yeah, right yeah. so he has to learn to take food from home as well yeah yeah so he'll know the difference but like you know what fridays is jumai's eid i you know because of this occasion i'm going to eat something yeah. from what my dad gave me and you know yeah i'm going to eat something good well you know what brother but there has to be a balance right that's and then i think saying. that's that's the thing if there's a balance like give your kids what they when they yeah. deserve it this and that but if you spoon feed them but now, they're going to keep the, expecting now it, right? the world is different now now we're, this is going to lunch money now kids 
are buying well kids well say expensive shopping right expensive shopping tablets ipads you know all that and the world has changed i gotta have gucci i gotta have armani i gotta have all of this cars gucci gang like cars right so parents have bought cars for them yeah. in a very young age. Right? Cell phones. Mm-hmm. So they're influenced now. Now, like the times are different, brother. Like the music is different. So the environment is different. The girls are different, right? Like at least when I was growing up, modesty, there was a bit of modesty still. But now there's, oh, it's, it's terrible. You can't tell the difference between a 12-year-old, right, and a, literally an 18-year-old. The 12 year old is wearing the same clothes as an 18 year old. It's scary. And I've seen them like on the street, driving by, whatever. I seen, I'm like, I don't know. I can't tell if this girl is that mature, right? Like she's 12, but she's dressed as an 18 year old. And that's scary, right? Right? Because she's trying to also act and to be cool and to be wanted, Right. right? So we have a lot of issues here amongst the society, and that's trouble. So, and then I think uh, when, it, when we talk about like money, just having the power of money, a lot of things, a lot of things change, right? And I, and I, I can't remember the guy's name. Um, he had a private island. I watched his biography. He was a very rich man. Um, he's on Netflix. Um, but it's a documentary. It was very interesting because he was, he was powerful, but nobody knew where his money was coming from. So what did he used to do? He used to take he used to take people on the private island, girls on a private island, and then do whatever he had to do with them and this and that. So money starts to what are we using this money for? Especially this like these these guys who are trying to be rappers and selling dope and this and that. They want, like you said, they want the uh, the best girl. They're they're buying friends, they're buying all of these things. And then you're looking at what is the end result? Right, and I think that's not what people are looking at. What is the end result well, see, look, of shaitan, all of this? Well, see, look, when Shaitan was observing, when the creation of Hazrat Adam alayhi salam, he's seen Allah subhanahu wa taala when creating the nafs. I'm the son of Adam, right? He's seen what the fitra of a man and a fitra of the woman. Mm. So men, in their fitra, they're attracted to women. Yeah, women are attracted to luxury and things uh worldly matters more than the man man is attracted to other pleasures same balance same type of thing but different items right they're both attracted to each other but uh very well different there's nothing wrong but like women are more into material men is an egoistic issue so both actually combine each other because the man has what the woman wants right? right And the woman has what the and 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 the vice versa, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the woman, she needs what the man has as well, right? Right, wealth. Right. right? She wants that uh, protection. She wants all that. She wants that bad boy figure as well. She's looking at the camera as well. She's looking at the uh, the cinema as well and the TV, and she's seeing that image, that rapper, dope the, the dope man, the whatever it is. So she wants to be cool as well. And the man, she wants her. Right. She wants the most beautiful girl. And this is the problem that we have in our society right now. So what is, uh, what is the end result? All of this, this luxury, this all of these things. Let's talk about that. Because like, people need a wake-up call, right? So what is the end result? Let's say, you know, for that drug dealer, what's the end result? It's a circle that keeps chasing itself right so you started with you know one kilo today right it's going to turn into 10 tomorrow 100 thereafter and it's going to keep increasing and what's going to end up happening is you're going to have to be watching out more for your life than actually selling that dope right right you're gonna you're gonna be you know up at night worrying about yo is someone coming after is someone coming after me is the police gonna get me right you have bigger problems now yeah right money that money was good whatever the however much you made right it bought you all that luxury that you wanted right but to keep it going to keep your expenses paid now you're you're gonna have more stress and more tension so that circle is just gonna keep repeating itself it's gonna get bigger and bigger and bigger right right? and it's just more headache for you and then think of it like this too by the time you're 40 or 50 if you're lucky to live enough that long right what are you going to do after that? Gonna, are you going to sell dope for the rest of your life till the day you die? And the right. end result is a cemetery anyways. <laughs> so they're going to die and they're going to go to Jahannam. 
and that's the outcome and that's the that's what the quran states as well so punishment for that individual who is selling marijuana selling whatever dope whatever it is punishment for that individual so one thing i want to add because you yeah. mentioned the cemetery okay yeah. so when you do certain acts like these it's been stated that your iman is lifted from you mm. while you're doing these acts mm. your iman is lifted from you and then once you're done it will be put back so imagine this you're selling dope in that state you die you're partying you're throwing whatever that state you die you don't have iman so where are you going to end up for the rest of eternity right where are you just imagine for a second no one can you know technically speaking pray for you pray on your behalf do sadaqah for you nothing so you're selling that dope whatever it is you died in that moment right you're going to wake up in in the grave you're not going to be able to answer those three questions you're not going to be able to get any sort of intercession or anything. You're going to remain eternally in the hellfire afterwards. If you're a Muslim, even if you're, there's a fatawa, if you're even a drug dealer, sometimes Salatul Janazah is now even wajib. Allah Allah. Allah. So sometimes there's some imams that are, they cannot do uh, Salatul Janazah depending because this person has crossed the line so much. This brother's money, you can't even take sadaqah from him, who's a drug dealer, right? You can't, you can't, you can't yeah, take yeah, that. It's, it's haram, yeah. right? So, I mean, there are enforcements. I read fatawas about this, that some imams have forbid not to read jan salatul janazah of so a drug dealer. So your janazah is not being read. Yeah. You're, you're, you can't answer the question. Your iman is gone, if not in jeopardy, depending on the severity of it. Allahu Akbar, how do we get this message out to these youths who are living, trying to live that life? Sorry, you were going to add something, Hafizab, before that? So, what I was going to add to that is yeah. that, look, can you look at yourself 20 years from now when you have a family, look your kid in the eye and say, listen, as a father, a mother, whatever it is, I was a drug dealer. Can you, can you look your kid in the eye and tell him face to face? Yeah. Right? And the other thing is, you're not just bringing shame for yourself. You're bringing shame for the rest of your family. There's so many cases here in Toronto Absolutely. alone, Absolutely. right? Where, fine, you got away, your life was spared, but your family members were kidnapped or they were drugged or something happened, yeah, something yeah. bad happened to them. So if you don't care about your own life, care about someone else's life for crying out loud. How, how about the point where what you do, your nasal is going to do? And now you talked about kids, for example. 90% of the time, if you're living this type of life, you didn't do a nikah. You had how many how many cases where we went to go meet people in the hospital because of this mm -hmm. abortion after abortion, abortion after abortion. Pray mm -hmm. for my daughter. Pray for my daughter. Mm -hmm. All of these things, and your kid is not even that jazz. And then you're gonna tell your kid, you know, see all that Gucci and that chain and all of these uh, things that you're wearing. I bought it with haram money. Mm -hmm. First of all, I didn't even marry your mother. Mm -hmm. All of these things. You have a najaz baby. Are you not thinking about the future? But I want to talk about one thing because Hafiz mentioned something. I'm saying the struggle. I was thinking while you guys are talking, the struggle, the struggle. Who struggled more than the Prophet alayhi salatu salam? The Prophet alayhi salatu salam, when, when the blessed companions, radiallahu anhum ajma'een, used to come to them and said they were hungry. What did the Prophet sallallahu alayhi do? He tied rocks on his stomach. Allahu Akbar. Who struggled more than the Prophet alayhi salatu salam? You want to sit here and you tell me, yo, I don't have five bucks to take the bus, and that's a struggle? Bro, you have feet, walk. The Prophet ﷺ didn't have buses and trains and airplanes and this and that. Like, think about this. But that message is not going out to the youth. And that's, that's the point. It's like you're trying to live this life, but you forgot your deen. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about even in that, in that aspect. I don't know what you were going to say, but... No, no, no. I was going to just uh, touch up on some things that I spoke about in the Juma Bayan as well mm -hmm. that we had. Yeah. Um, there's five things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he looks at the man, right, to see... If barakah is going to be given to him, that's one through uh, iman, firstly. Yeah. Second, aqal is through your iman, Allah will give you hadaya. Of course. So it's your aqal. Yeah. So this is the first step. If you don't have iman, you will not have aqal. After aqal, because you're choosing what to do, you know, right and wrong. You know what to do. You know what's right, what's wrong, because Iman is teaching you. Third, your nafs. Mm. If you control your nafs after that, you surpassed. If you don't control your nafs, this is what is leaving to. So if you choose the wrong thing, let's go back to the akal. You choose the wrong step, it's going to affect your nafs. 
Mm. Ego. Mm. Okay, I'm going to go in the wrong direction now. Yeah. If you're in a good direction, it's going to be in the, in the right path. Fourth, wealth. Yeah. So, nafs, you're earning halal, kharch halal, everything is prosper. You're going to have prosperity, barakah. And then what is it going to lead to? The, the last part, what you just touched upon, nasal. Mm. When all four combined, you have beautiful children. Mashallah. So look at all the options that I've told you. If one of them you slip, it's going to affect on your nasal. Any single one. Wealth, the wrong choice. Your nafs, the, you know, marrying a prostitute. <laughs> your nasal is what? <laughs> oh, bro, like, you know, you want to live that life. Like, girls want to live that life. The girls want to live and be like, you want to become a stripper. And right now, you're looking like a prostitute. Because I said this in Juma Bayan as well. There's no difference, sweetheart, between you and a prostitute on Valentine's Day. No. It's for Ghair Mehram. Right? For Ghair Mehram. And we'll get to the married ones just now, too. But Ghair Mehram. Yeah. A prostitute, brother, I told you my Juma Bayan, the brothers who are here, have a dealing. You pay me this, okay, let's go to the bedroom. Khalas. Yeah. yeah. Done. Your meeting is done. You yeah. got what you did. You paid or left. Valentine's Day is even worse for the woman. She wants she wants balloons. She wants a stupid teddy bear. Okay, you got luxury. You got a card. Okay, you got all that. Look at the demand. Chocolates, diamonds, all flowers, that, right? Yeah, Nonsense. Flowers. And the outcome is the same. The <laughs> bed. <laughs> the outcome is the same. The bed. After that, <laughs> it could be an abortion. Or after that, it could be a baby, but haram. Yeah. What did you gain from that? Sisters, you have one option. And this world is very tough for you. It's harder for you. Sorry to say, it's a tough world for sisters out here. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them dignity and honor. Welcome to Islam. Islam was the only religion that will honor you Mashallah. and respect you. Yeah. Before Jah the time of Jahalat, look what the condition of the woman was. But you had the option of covering yourself in honor, in parda, wow. in a veil, wow. and in chastity. That one option that Allah has given you, your dignity, <clears throat> all right, was for your husband and yourself in the time of nikah. Even then, the angels are going to give you sawab for legitimacy, intimacy, love, yeah. nikah. But because you're doing haram, you let it go. Now the world has turned on you. Now yeah. when you try to get a proposal, because of the mistakes, how many Valentines you had, <laughs> you can't get a proposal. Okay? You can't get a husband anymore because you're the talk of the street now. No one wants to talk of the street. They want a beautiful wife. They want a modest wife. End of the day, that brother who spent the time with you, who laid with you. He ain't going to marry you. He ain't going to marry you. He just <laughs> used you and left you. Yeah. He treated you like a prostitute. But you're too stupid to understand that. So welcome back to Islam now, where you do istighfar. Come back. Read about the pious woman in Islam. Sayyida Aisha Pak, radiallahu ta'ala an. Sayyida Bibi Pak, Fatima Zahra, radiallahu ta'ala anha. Read about their biographies, where no one has even seen Bibi Pax, the Batta even, the Ahchal, the Lebas of Bibi Pax, no one has even seen yet. Look at the dignity, look at the honor. And if you're into Tasawwuf, Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jalani's uh. mother. The outcome, Valaya, Sultan al Awliya, who never uh. walked, who never seen, who never touched. Never even looked upon and gazed upon a ghair mehram. The outcome, ghaus al-azam. Look at the outcome I told you, nasal. If you want your children to become someone that has respect, and that is in Islam, your kids will become hufaz, like hafiz yahya, hafiz balad, hafiz luqman. Good parents. The outcome is good kids. Simple. Yeah. Ulema. You cannot do anything that is in Islamic way, I can say. Okay, say, okay, your kids are not capable. Tell them, that's fine. Become caretakers of the mosque. Mm. Sweep the mosque. Clean the mosque. 
You understand? Be good children, good people. Just be good. Yeah. You'll be good if you stay with good. Yeah. Simple. Well, as I was saying, it goes, it ties back into what's the bigger picture here is that why did Allah create us? Right? And he says in the Quran that he created jinn and man only to worship him. Wow. Right? Only to worship him. Illa so only mm -hmm. to worship him. So technically speaking, going to work, driving a car, whatever, it doesn't fall under worship. Yeah. Right? But Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam showed us exactly how you can make every single moment of your life, whether you're going to work, whether you're earning money, whether you're talking to your family, your beloved, your loved ones, whoever it is, he showed us how to make it a wor an act of worship. Mashallah. Right? So even when you earn money, and it, is, it should be halal money, right? Make sure that you, you have the right niyyah. It starts with the intention, 100%. right? Because listen, he's the one who's going to provide you sustenance. Of course. He's already written for you what you're going to get in your life and where you're going to get it from, of course. right? You don't need to, you know, go down that path. It doesn't matter how much it's going to offer you. It's going to end up in the same thing, that you're going to put your entire life in jeopardy. Your, right. your, your, your spirituality, your soul, everything's going to be in jeopardy. And now, after someone's died, we always hear this hadith whenever there's a funeral. There's three things that will benefit you. Mm. One is beneficial knowledge that you passed on. What knowledge did you pass on as a dope dealer to someone else? How to sell mm. dope, how to give more dope, right? <laughs> uh, what, what this and this produces. I mean, that's what you, what you taught, yeah. right? That's not beneficial knowledge. That's sinful knowledge. 100%. You're going to get the sin of that too. Yeah. Right? Every person that buys dope off you, whatever it is, they use it. You're also getting the sin for that because you're the one who initiated, gave, initiated you gave him the ability to do it. Yeah. Right? So your money became poison. Your deeds became poison. What are you living your life for? What yeah. do you have to show face for afterwards? Right? 100%. Second thing that, that is there is Sadaqa Jariya. What Sadaqa Jariya are you doing? It goes <laughs> back to the same thing. You're, you're making your deeds worse for yourself. Yeah. And the last thing is a pious aulad, right? You're not going to have pious children if you're a drug dealer, yeah. right? If you're into all this negativity, right? So if you're going to invest in yourself right now, make sure when you invest in yourself, you do it with an eye for this world, but also the hereafter, yeah. right? That's why the ulama and, and the Nabi alayhi salatu wa stress so much on earning halal. Make sure what you earn, what you put in your body, everything, it, it's according to the sharia and, and the deen, yeah. right? Because it affects people in so many different factors they don't even think of. No, 100%. And I think, you know, um, we're going to speak for, I think, because of the sound issue or whatever, but we'll, we'll give it an extra five minutes or whatever. There's a sound issue? No, though in the beginning or whatever, so oh. we lost we lost ten minutes or something mm -hmm. like that. But anyways, nonetheless, we're gonna wrap up soon. Uh, but I do want to touch on um, what is the and we understand this, but it's just to give people motivation. There's some people out there that are struggling, whether they're struggling with trying to fit in, whether they're trying to uh, struggle to find their own identity, or whether it's people that you know live. Like, yo, mom and dad work, like, mom, mom works in a factory, dad works as a taxi driver, this and that. They don't have the luxury and they're seeing this. What I'm going to say is, to start the conversation about this, is you don't need that Gucci, Armani, the Prada, the Hugo Boss and all of that to make yourself look good. Do you get what I mean? Like, brands is what the media is portraying. Yo, you got to wear this. You got to look like this. That's cool. Slavery is just an... A it just changed now. Slavery is still there, but now they changed it where you are a volunteer slave now. Mm. You understand? Mm. Oh, you can wear their names now. Before the slave master, right? They used to stamp you to see you know who was who owned you. Yeah. So now what they do, they they made it into a fashion. Oh, Calvin Klein, Prada, Gucci. Tommy Hilfiger, whatever, Nike, Jordans, whatever it is, brother, like, you know, you wear it or you don't wear it or whatever, how it is, you know, you're a slave to them. Look, at the end of the day also is we don't want to come across saying, you know, you can't wear these nice things. The Prophet ﷺ also mentioned, like, if you're going to spend, spend in the way of Allah. What you said, Hafizah, about intention. It's intention. So buy stuff nice, but every penny, and we read this in Akida books as well, Every penny that you spend, you are questioned on it. Just like every word you're going to speak, you're questioned on it. 
what did you do for the deen? You're going to be questioned on it. All this money that was given, what did you give for the masjid? What did you, you know, what did you put your kids in? Or what did you spend it on and stuff? If you're buying every Jordan, you're standing in front of Foot Locker, you know, on a new release or whatever, just to get an extra pair, two pairs, three pairs. It's a, not a need, right? We need one pair of shoe, we run it down, and then we keep moving. That's what I mean. Like, you can buy your stuff nice stuff, but when you need it. Now, the difference, what we have to understand is between need and want. If you need it, get it. If you want it, it's kind of different, right? But at the end of the day, we look at, for those individuals, and I want to give a message to those individuals who are actually struggling and need some motivation, right? Who, who's seen, like, there's four people, like, you and your siblings share one room. And there are people out there like that. And they're not resorting to drugs and, and violence and all of these things. What is the motivation that we can give them if they're watching? Hafiz, we'll start with you. So the motivation I can tell you is, listen, if you ever need help, you feel like I'm going down the wrong path. It's never too late to say, listen, guys, I need some help. We're always, our doors are open here, sure. right? Come here, talk to any one of us. You can call the Mushid helpline, come in whenever. We don't judge you, right? 100%. We'll help you get, get to that because you can't get out of that alone, yeah. right? It's a struggle that once you're in too far deep, there's no way you're swimming back alone, yeah. right? We'll, we'll be there, but I can't read minds. Yeah, yeah. Right. I can. We can't read minds. Right. We can tell maybe something's off, but you have to make that first step to say, listen, I want to get my life in check. Right. I want to leave this. Right. So and, and, and also remember this. I'm not trying to scare anyone when I say this, but we always talk about, you know, Muslims when when they hear, OK, you know what? So and so made fun of our religions. We, we tend to, you know, we tend to react to it. Yeah. Right. But remember this, you are making fun of your own religion. You're insulting your own prophet. You're insulting your own Lord when you do this, yeah. right? So just think of that, right? That w when I'm doing something, am I insulting the one who created me? Or am I actually doing something that he would love and he would like, right? And if you live your life always questioning yourself, the ulama always say, you know, take account of yourself before account is taken upon you, 100%. right? You'll never see a billionaire... You never see Mark Zuckerberg, Jeff Bezos, any of these people wearing Gucci or Armada or anything no. like this. No. The rich stay rich because how? They conserve their money, yeah. right? If you're not, again, to your point, not saying don't buy good stuff for yourself. Yeah. They, when, you, when you think, okay, or when you see yourself saying, okay, this is more than I need, right? Now it's becoming a want. Stop it right there. 100%. Because it's going to become out of control. And then it's going to corrupt you even further. Right. right. So back to the point is that, listen, if you feel that, you know what, at least talk to someone, take the first step, talk to someone, talk to yeah. anyone here. We're yeah. ready to help. Right. Sure. But I can't, I'm not a mind reader. I'm not a fortune teller. I can't, I can't tell what's going on in your life. So you have to be proactive. Take that first step. We'll reach out. We'll, we'll give you that Continue. hand and pull you in. Right? No problem. Absolutely. And so for the, the ones that are in the struggle, they need motivation, meaning, so Hafiz, I've talked on those ones who are far deep inside and all of that. But how about the ones that, you know, they see mom and dad constantly working, you know, groceries getting less in the refrigerator. You know what I mean? They can't find a rishta because society has deemed, yo, they're poor and etc. So things like that. Like, let's give a motivational for the ones who are actually in the struggle. The only thing I can really say to you is that itself is motivation as well to do good, right? Um, unfortunately, if you don't have uh, at home, you don't have all the needs at home, you do good at school, um, the inspiration and the future should be a good career. And then, inshallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will help you in your life. Don't do anything that is out of your boundary. Don't copy anyone. Uh, be... Uh, be dutiful to your parents be with them um it's not their fault yeah okay we need to understand this this is everyone has circumstances everyone has a limit it's that's what i the first thing i said there's the society has put classes amongst the communities and this is why it's like this if university was free it would have eliminated poverty as well, mm. right? If we had one shot, uh, but no, what it is is on the resume, someone graduated from such and such school and 
the other brother couldn't get to university because of financial distress or whatever it is. But the brother who went to university because his parents were well off, the other one couldn't go to university because he couldn't afford forever circumstances. These are classes, brother. Yeah. Right. So already it's tough for you to do, but it should be inspirational to you to do good for you to um, strive harder to make it. But don't <clears throat> copy yourself. Don't want to be like someone that you're not, because that's what also will ruin your image. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will always help you. Exactly what I just said that you, if you're looking for motivation and you said, you know, you're in the struggle right now. That's your motivation right there, right? Mm. You don't have the greatest situation at home. You know, your parents have to work, all this. Use that a, as a motivation to say, listen, I want to give my family a better life. Mm. I'm going to work hard and never stop working hard, right? And, you know, once you're working hard, leave the rest in his hands. He will provide for you. I'm sure. telling you, he will give you from places you never even thought that you would, uh, you would have income from, Absolutely. right? It, but just be true to yourself, yeah. right? Be true to yourself. And, and if you're looking for motivation, use your current situation to say, I want to get out of this, right? I want to better myself every single day, not just for me, but for my family, for everyone that's around me. I want to give everyone around me a better future and a, a, another, a better day tomorrow, right. right? To look forward to. So your biggest motivation is is your current situation right no i think uh, very well said and i think um you know this podcast definitely this episode for sure opened up uh, a lot of eyes and stuff like that in regards to kind of like just on a real talk like what 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 the struggle is and why people are doing certain things and this and that um so we're gonna go we're gonna conclude um we're, so we're gonna go to final remarks right so kind of summing it all up from from both you guys i'm gonna say uh, not as a conclusion from my part, um, but just in the sense of nobody struggled more than the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi the Ahlul Bayt. You know, we go back and we learn about, uh, you know, the battle of Karbala and what Imam Hussein radiallahu an went through and all of these struggle. Nothing was easy. Nothing was given easy to them, um, you know, and the entire family. You know, the, I remember a hadith I was reading in Sayyid Bukhari. The, the narrator said that Aisha radiallahu anha and said that they went 30 days sometimes without cooking food in their house. 30 days, no complaints. The Prophet used to eat dates and cucumbers. You know, we want, alhamdulillah, we still, no matter how you are, somebody is worse, right? To, to Hafizab's point is like you're in the struggle, this and that, I get it, but you're probably better off than a lot of people, right? And that's when we have to sing. And I think... When we look at our own lifestyle, we got to think about, did we thank Allah even for what we do have? We have a house. Okay, so what? We're, we're you know, in four people sleeping in one room, but we have a house. We have food. We have certain clothes on our back. So what? We don't have Gucci and Armani, but who's that? You're not taking that to your qabr. So all of these things wrapping up, and I think we have to thank Allah for the counting our blessings is what I was getting at. Count your blessings. Thank Allah. Uh, the Prophet ﷺ mentioned so many times, when you remember Allah, He was remembering you. You call out for Him. He loves you more than 70 mothers combined. And that's what it comes down to uh, from my part. So I'm going to turn it over to you guys for final remarks. And then we'll go back into the um, to the wrap-up, inshallah. So Hafiz up if you want to start. So, well, to wrap everything up or to sum everything up is that if you're in a struggle, just remember this, that that struggle was there for a reason. Right, because you know when we have everything good, we tend to forget Allah as well, right? Mm. So to your point is that that struggle was made because your back is against the wall now. Who are you gonna remember? Of course. Right. Sometimes it's purposely done. There's a hikmah in this as yes, well, yes. right? That who are you gonna turn to? Are you gonna turn to the bad path or the good path, right? And Allah says that He won't test any soul more than that they can bear, sure. and He tests those whom that are closest to Him. Mm -hmm. So you want to take this as a sign as I want to get closer to Allah. That's your golden ticket right there, yeah. right? So see it now. Try to now try to try to use that to your advantage, and the the ball's in your court. And again, if you ever need help, right? You ever feel like I can't do this myself? Reach out to us. For it's sure. never too late. Hundred percent. If I see you at the mosque with your pants down, buddy, like you know what? It's not going to be funny, brother. Okay, because you're not hood. Okay, come back to the masjid. Yeah. Okay, come back. Uh, come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is not Los Angeles. This is not Compton, brother. Like, I'm, I'm not even going to lie to you. I'm just, I, don't, I don't know what else to say because it, it makes me laugh. There's a lot of struggles. 
there's a lot of struggles out there someone said how come how come you didn't uh how come you didn't say uh, the minder thing with the female <laughs> there's gonna be a lot of minders tomorrow oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. You, know, you know i didn't even know it was valentine's day until <laughs> the brothers were telling me to do the topic on that but it's just if, if i catch you in the parking lot i know it's you so don't 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 you ever go home okay just go home and spend that day just with your family it's family day too so remember that so uh spend it with your family not in the parking lot and if I see any of that, you guys know where I'm at. But jokes are, you know what, look, man. If I see you in the masjid, I'll be very happy to see you. And we're all here to welcome you. Absolutely. We need help in the masjid. Um, we need more people to come back to the masjid here, especially in Scarborough, change. There's always a time to change. And if you need someone to speak to, come speak to me. So a lot of people, alhamdulillah, respect me a lot. Uh, because I'm very open. I'm not going to listen. I'm not. I've seen a lot in my life and I'd love to share that to you because I'm going to be open with you. Right. I'm going to tell you what I've seen. And it motivated me more to go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right. It inspired me a lot to learn more, too. Right. Um, we all have stories, brother. We all have stories. We all have a past. There's nothing wrong with that. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always hearing. Is all hearing, come back. You better have your pants up. <laughs> you better be not running around. Not too you know high I mean? up. <laughs> not too high up either. Exactly. <laughs> I want to come back to the masjid, brother. We're happy to see you, sisters. Uh, you know, the the message to the sisters is very important because it's as I told you. Like you know, I'm not here to you know be sexist, but I hear as a dear one of the imams at the mosque and and. A brother that cares for you right it's tough out here for women it's very tough that's why i said just like that minder thing the guy is just gonna leave but you're gonna be left alone right you're gonna be left alone heartbroken and then it's, it's a tough world for women trust me so women sisters my dear sisters um love each other uh love your family love your Love yourself. Uh, love yourself more than anything. Love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Love Rasulullah. Love the masjid as well. We need more sisters to come to the mosque as well. To do work inside the masjid as well. Madrasa, it's, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's time for you to especially learn Islam as well. Mm. Um, there's more courses. The Makkah Islamic Center is going to be uh, giving out for the sisters as well in the near future. Uh, knowledge is power. And that's all I have to say. MashaAllah. So, um, good episode. Um, but I want to, something was coming to my mind, but I think I, I'm going to leave it uh, for now. I think the conversation is going to open up again, but it's, uh, it was a good conversation uh, in regards to cream. So, I mean, cash rule, everything around me and uh, the urge and the need to, you know, be, you know, famous in the sense of whether it's internet famous, whether it's having power through money and et cetera, and uh, how we use it. So I want to thank everyone for uh, joining in. Alhamdulillah, it was a very good episode. Episode 10. So we got two more episodes, and I think we're going to season two. I think Hafiz Luqman is going to take over the, um, <laughs> take over the, the hosting for season two. Um, so um, thank you very much for, for tuning in. Uh, we'll be back next week, inshallah, Saturday, uh, 7 p.m., uh, with another great topic and another great discussion. So I want to thank Hafiz Yahya. I want to thank Janab Amir Qadi Saab for, uh, for taking time out to, to be here today. Good discussion. Um, if you haven't already... And if you're watching somewhere else, so watch on uh, Mike Up 416 on YouTube. Like, subscribe, hit the bell icon, support the page. Every episode I say this, it's been 10 episodes, and we have like 40, 50 people watching on something else. Can you please just go to the YouTube channel, like, subscribe, hit the bell icon, please. Um, we're trying to build that up, build the awareness and build the page up, uh, inshallah. Uh, we're doing great on Instagram, uh, 4.5K uh, on Instagram. And, uh, you know, still growing a lot of new, new, new faces and stuff like that. So we got a lot of good things happening for the rest of February, two more weeks, uh, inshallah, especially the last episode where the, it's going to be a sister's event. I think everyone's going to enjoy that, especially the sisters that are going to be tuning in, uh, inshallah. So, um, Instagram at mic'd up four, one, six, please like it, uh, please follow and send us your feedback. Uh, we always appreciate it. Uh, until we meet again. Oh, sorry. I forgot to mention Amal Artistry <laughs> is sponsoring our event. Uh, for the entire month, 
Um, so to get in hold of uh, Amal and for all your artwork needs, murals, paintings, etc. Um, she has a great Ramadan campaign that's going to be coming out where she's going to be donating all of her earnings to the Makkah Islamic Center. Alhamdulillah. So she, she sold out her paintings last year in the month of Ramadan. Uh, I'm pretty sure she's going to sell out again. So um, I don't know if it's on the screen. If it's not, you'll, you'll, you'll see it at the end as well. Um, but at Amal Artistry on Instagram, at Amal Artistry on Twitter, info.amalartistry at gmail.com, and her website, www.amalartistry.com. And um, since we're talking about the Makkah Islamic Center, 3234 Eglinton Avenue East in Scarborough, um, we need your help. We have a renovation project happening downstairs for the Sisters Hall and the Madrasa, uh, for, the, for the Kids Hall and the Sisters Hall. Um, Mukka Center, M E C C A C E N T E R dot C A, Mukka Center. Uh, please go out and uh, you know help donate to the masjid. Uh, the, obviously, the the good deeds involved in doing so are are you know, like are amazing. You donate uh, to the to the masjid, Allah will give you an equivalent in Jannah. So you got two things there. You got something great from Allah, and you're and you're and you're giving to obviously paradise. Uh, in Jannah, inshallah. So, makacenter.ca, please help and donate. Um, as we know, it's COVID-19 and, and all of that. It's greatly appreciated. Until next week, Saturday, inshallah, 7 p.m., we will see you. Jazakallah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.